People typically use a base coat to prevent staining and or to prolong their manicure. But how many of us have actually tested several different base coats and documented the results? Well, I decided to do some of that myself by comparing different drugstore base coats in the hopes of identifying the best one to prolong my manicure. Maybe in a later video, I will also test the staining. So first, I'd like to explain my testing process. I tried my very best to have the only variable be the base coat. That means the rest of the polishes I used with the base coats were the same. So two coats of red polish and one coat of top coat. I only tested regular base coats, so I didn't use any base coat top coat combos. I also didn't use any that claimed to smooth out the nail or help it grow. If the chip got really bad on the nail, I sometimes repaired it. Repairing was only done if I was worried that the chip would cause my nail to break. Sometimes my nails did break, causing my nails to some weeks be shorter. I tried my best to keep it consistent. Because everyone's nails are different, my results may be different from someone else's. Also, during the process, I didn't always take pictures every day. Instead, I took photos only on the days where I noticed my nails had new chips or were getting worse. So first, I needed a control group. In this case, it was using no base coat at all. This no base coat control group allows me to then compare what happens without using a base coat with my base coat results. In theory, nail polish on top of the base coat should last longer than with none at all. If it does the same or worse, this doesn't seem good for the base coat, unless you're only interested in not staining the nail. I painted my nails without base coat in the morning and it already chipped slightly before the end of the day. On day two, I noticed my index finger was chipping. By day three, my thumb was quite chipped. My index finger seemed more chipped and my pinky was slightly chipped. As the days progressed, each nail that was already chipped got worse. Here you can see day five's results. And here you can see day six. And by day seven, every nail has at least some chipping. And as you can see, some of them do not look so great. By day 7, it was time to rate how my nails looked. I decided to rate the results of each base coat test as well, so I could compare them easier. Here's how I made my rating system. For each nail at the end of day 7, I gave 0 points for little or no issues for that finger, 1 point for minor issues, 2 points for moderate issues, 3 points for really bad issues that required repair, and by the end of this, when you add them all together, your goal is to get a lower number. So a lower number would be the best rating. So again, looking back at my results without the base coat, I rated it a 7 on day 7. The first base coat we'll look at is the one from Essie. Not only is this one popular, it also has some bold claims. With a price tag of $10.27, it advertises that it helps to prolong your manicure by two days. Remember that in the test without a base coat, besides a little chip on day zero, we had an index finger chip on day two and thumb and pinky on day three. Based on my interpretation, we shouldn't see major chipping until day four. Let's jump into the results. I didn't see chipping until day three when my thumb and middle finger were showing wear. By day five, I saw some more wear on my middle finger and my pinky was very chipped. On day six, my thumbnail itself cracked pretty badly. I had to repaint it in order to prevent worse damage. I don't think the break was the base coat's fault. Unfortunately, during almost every base coat test, that thumbnail had a split in it. Let's look at day seven. Ignore the fuzzy on my pinky nail. Sometimes I don't notice until it's too late to refilm. Did we see an unchipped manicure until day four like we were hoping? I'd say it was pretty close. As for the rating, I gave it a five. It was clearly better to wear the Essie base coat than nothing at all. Let's look now at the OPI base coat. I've used this one for years, so I was definitely curious to see how it would compare to the other base coats. At my grocery store, it's a little cheaper than the SE at $8.93. By day two, I noticed some chipping on my middle finger and my thumb. On day three, 
there was more wear on those same fingers as well as some slight chipping on my ring finger. Day four was getting a little worse with a new chip on the index finger. As you can see, on day five and on day six, the chipping progressed. Here we are at day seven. The manicure obviously is not looking that great. In fact, when I did my rating scale, it was a seven, which is the same as the rating for no base coat at all. Although it had the same rating, I will give it some credit for not even slightly chipping until day two. Whereas without a base coat, there was a slight chip on day zero. Next up is the Orly base coat. It cost me $9.22, which is in between the OPI and SE price tags. On day one, my middle finger chipped. And on day two, my index finger also chipped. As you can see, as the days progressed, the already existing chips got worse. By day six, my thumb started to look not so great too. At day seven, I gave it a rating of a seven. That's the same rating as the OPI and not wearing a base coat at all. It's still better than no base coat at all though because at least there was no chipping on the day I painted my nails. I think OPI was slightly better than Orly because Orly's first chip was on day one, whereas OPI's first chip was on day two. They both looked similar on day seven, but OPI is slightly cheaper. Revlon will be the next one we'll look at. I honestly forgot to write down the price for this one and then couldn't find it again at the store I got it at. When I look it up online at Walmart, it looks like it sells for $8.95. That seems consistent with OPI's price tag. Each day I noticed no significant chipping and very little wear. This continued all the way until day seven. Because of this little wear, I rated day seven with a zero, which is a perfect score. I'm very impressed with this and could have worn it for more days. However, I had more base coat testing to complete. That testing includes the Sesh Vite base coat. I absolutely love their top coat, so I was curious to see how well their base coat would fare. This base coat is more affordable than the others we've seen so far, costing $6.67. Nothing really happened with this one until day three when my index finger chipped. On day four, that chip got worse, but that was it. At day five, my ring finger chipped, and on day six, my index finger got much worse. If I remember correctly, I believe I repaired it a little bit out of fear that the chipping would cause my nail to break. My pinky and thumbnail chipped at day seven. So at day seven, I gave it a rating of a seven. That's consistent with the OPI, Orly, and also no base coat at all. The difference though is that Seshvit didn't start chipping until day three, while OPI started chipping on day two, Orly on day one, and no base coat at all on day zero. The last base coat is from Wet n Wild. This one only cost me 96 cents, so it was significantly cheaper than the other ones I had tested. I was very curious to see if it would work as well as the base coats that cost seven times as much or more. I started seeing chipping on my ring and index finger on day two. Day three got really bad. You can see significant chipping on my ring, index, and middle fingers, as well as a slight chip on my pinky. It was so bad that I had to fix my ring and middle finger to prevent my nails from breaking. On day four, my ring finger was horrible and I ended up having to fix it too. Day five was my pinky finger's turn to chip significantly. It was going so badly that I decided to end it early on day five. This base coat got a rating of 12 on day five. Obviously, this was the worst rating. Strangely enough, it was even worse than no base coat at all in regards to prolonging the manicure. Now the key question is, which base coat worked best for me? I made a little table documenting my main results. The clear winner in this was Revlon, with Essie coming in second place. Most of the other base coats had the same rating as no base coat at all. However, they still were useful in preventing early chipping. The exception obviously was Wet n Wild, which caused more chipping than no base coat at all. 
That's not to say that Wet n Wild doesn't have use. It could very well be useful for preventing staining. And maybe one day I will test that out. Until then, I hope you found this video helpful. And that's what Kay says.